Howdy, I'm Chuck Corbin from Arizona State University, and I'm here today to talk about online secondary school physical education, uh, fitness for life opportunities. I'm speaking specifically of the high school and middle school fitness for life programs and the online opportunities with those particular programs. Um, I start out by saying that if you're going to do online learning, I suggest you uh, go to this uh, link. It's a free online guidance document from Shape America. It talks about all the kinds of things you should do if you're going to do online courses. And uh, if you want to uh, take a screen capture of that link, you can do so. Otherwise, it will be available to you in the hand associated with this uh, presentation. Um, as you, many of you know, because during the corona crisis, I'm sure many people were thrust into doing online uh, uh, learning and physical education, even though that wasn't their original intent. Uh, well, I'm sure that there are hard uh, courses combine online learning with face-to-face -face learning. Uh, some of the advantages, of course, are uh, some of the activities can be done face to face, some of the uh, self assessments, some of the um, uh, various types of fitness assessments. Um, so, and of course, assessment in, in the forms of final exams or quizzes and things like that, which can be done online or face to face. Some places prefer to do them face to face. If you're doing online learning, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time about this, but just uh, indicate that there's synchronous, which was uh, you're interacting with the, the students, and you you speak, they speak back, and it, you're you're synchronized with them, or asynchronous, where you make a presentation or you give them something to do that they uh, look at that, do that, and then they submit this back to you, or you interact not in real time. Uh, it's not my intent to go over those. I'm not the great expert on all online learning. My goal here today is to, if you're going to do this, especially if you're into doing this, here are some uh, options for you to consider. In the State of the Nation report, Shape America in 2016 indicated one states were involved in online physical education but they indicated that uh, indeed probably all 50 states were involved, if not officially. And by now we know that there are online programs in every state, because, and even some states mandated that uh, every subject matter have online learning, which means that physical education in those states will have that, whether you want to do it or not. And of course, during the coronavirus crisis, uh, the expansion to do things on various formats, whether it's on Zoom, Google Classroom, uh, the uh, other, uh, many other Skype versions where you uh, prepare presentations and, and share them synchronously, asynchronously uh, with, with students. Um, we know that the most common form of online physical education is conceptual physical education, fitness education, uh, things like this, which I'll be talking about uh, today. So just a definition of fitness education. I've covered this in other presentations, but uh, this is from the fitness education framework. Uh, I'll read it. The Sorority Fitness Education is a subcomponent of the total physical education program focusing on helping students acquire knowledge and higher order understanding of health related fitness, the product, as well as the habit of physical activity and other healthy lifestyles, eating well, uh, uh, managing stress. These are the processes that lead to the product. And these lead to good health-related physical fitness and health and wellness throughout life. So that's fitness education. Fitness for life, which I'll talk about, is a form of conceptual physical education, which is a type of fitness education that involves classroom sessions, a textbook, and typically has either digital or a paper uh, portion.
portfolios. Uh, so it is a fitness education and fitness for life meets the conditions of both fitness education and actual physical education. And the public published literature, the research is typically referred to as actual physical education. As for life options that I'll talk about today, let's start with the high school program. And um, the sixth edition of Fitness for Life is shown here. Uh, it's a comprehensive 21 chapter uh, on 20, uh, has a total of 42 lessons, two lessons per chapter. Uh, it's uh, meant for a one semester course, but it can be uh, uh, over a full year. It's comprehensive. Information is reliable, reviewed, and integrated. And I think the integration is very important because as teachers get involved in learning, problems that you're you're forced to come up with content. Where do you get the content? Well, there's a lot of stuff online. That means that you spend hours and days looking for uh, things and vetting it to make sure that it's, that it's accurate. And you have to put it together in some a comprehensive way to see the extent to which it's going to meet your overall objectives, which include meeting uh, Shape America standards, state standard of uh, fitness education benchmarks, uh, as well as your low uh, uh, expectations for learning objectives. Um, the School Fitness for Life book is available at a book for use on iPad and iPhone. It's available in all of the other formats, um, including Kindle, Nook, Google, Kobo. It's available in PDF form, and it allows you uh, to email assignments uh, and forth, and uh, so students can access depending on the type of device uh, that they have. Uh, one of the good things, as I mentioned, is that it's comprehensive. And so for online teachers, you have worksheets, uh, extensive work every lesson with lesson plans. And these worksheets are editable and convertible. By that, I mean, because they're in a word format, if you don't like exactly how an object is written, you can change them. If you modify a worksheet, instead of having to draft your own worksheets from scratch on your online course, you edit them. They're convertible, meaning that, for example, you use Google Classroom, you can convert uh, uh, worksheets to Google Forms. And I'll mention uh, a little bit later that we have a webinar available through Human Kinetics uh, where two current teachers uh, uh, who are using Google Classroom talk about how that can be done. In addition, the resources and class cards and activity cards uh, that can be used in at-home exercise uh, and activity circuits, videos, PowerPoint presentations. And I know during Rona Cross, I was contacted many people. And uh, one of the things uh, they, if they had our resources, they used the PowerPoint presentations to make uh, Zoom, other type of presentations uh, to conduct their online classes. They include the quizzes, the tests, the answer keys, rubrics, lesson plans, and a dedicated uh, web page that has a series of professional development videos that you can go to for free at the Fitness for Law.org website. And you can uh, learn how to use the materials that I'm talking about right now. You can also go to the dedicated website uh, by just going to Fitness for Life dot org and when you get there you'll see a screen that looks like this you can then go to program foundings support resources frequently asked questions updates if you're interested in contacting your sales rep it tells you how to do that and it shows you how to access the digital product uh, which you would have to have purchased in order to do but uh, as you can see on the screen you would access your resources and once you once you're uh, have uh, agreed to use the textbook for your students uh, you get access uh, to those resources 
The middle school program has the same available resources online uh, teacher's guide that has all the same resources that I just mentioned. Um, it however has another feature and it's interactive web text and then the next edition of the high school textbook will have that as well and this offers you other advantages for online courses and here's why with the various forms of the digital or e-text that i talked about in the high school for example um, the uh, iBook version or the Kindle version, or even if it's just a PDF downloaded onto a uh, laptop or a, a desktop, <clears throat> they have to be loaded on a single device. So if it's loaded on a device that's in the school computer, then when the kids go home, they don't have access to it. But with an interactive web text, the student logs on to the uh, in this case, the Middle Fitness for Life Middle School website. And at that website, you can, uh, the student has a code and accesses that so they can access that uh, interactive web text on any device from anywhere. And so this allows the, the kids to do them at home, at school, uh, wherever, and it makes it so that students don't all have to have the same type of device in order to make uh, the course manageable. Um, that can work also with a, a PDF um, version of the high school book that can be loaded uh, to devices. Uh, the, the interactive web text has embedded videos, self-score quizzes, activity challenges, and a variety of other features. I'm just gonna show you some screen captures of a couple of those uh, for your interest. Um, if you uh, logged on, or if you were a student and you logged on to Fitness for Life Middle School, you'd see a screen like this. You, uh -oh, I inadvertently advanced, you could go to whichever chapter that you want. You click on that chapter, and it would bring you to the first lesson and the first page of the first lesson for that particular chapter, and away you go. Um, this happens to be one that I want to show you. This is a feature called Academic Connections, which uh, uh, deals with things like math, science, and um, English language arts were embedded into the physical education aspects of the program. The reason why I wanted to show this is throughout the book, key terms are in red, and there are active links on the interactive web text. If you click on that, that term, in this case, kinesiology, it comes up and it gives you the definition of that term. Not only that, if you then click on the uh, sound button here, it'll tell you that in either English or Spanish, whichever you, the student chooses. So all of the key terms are highlighted in the text and defined either in print or verbally, depending on how you want uh, to do that. Um, This is an example of another thing that's embedded in the interactive web text at the Fitness for Life Middle School, and it's called Give It a Try. After each module or mini module within a lesson, it's equivalent to a major heading in the textbook. There's a little quiz that allows the students to drag and drop, do whatever, and they, they do that, and then they have a button down here where they can check their answers, and see how they do. So this is, in a sense, like program learning because it allows them to evaluate uh, their formative or formatively assess their their learning as they go. Um, this is uh, adaptable to all formats, and that's one of the major advantages of it. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a a um, webinar that's available at this address. This address will be available to you in the handout, but if you want to do a screen capture, you can get that. And if you go to that website, there's an hour long webinar that talks about how to use Fitness for Life uh, and CPE type conceptual physical education using Google Classrooms with two teachers who are actually using that format. Um, 
it would be remiss of me uh, not to mention some of the issues uh, and uh, my colleagues and I have uh, talked about these in various presentations at Shape America and other conferences. Uh, one of the issues is activity. What are we going to do about activity? Um, and um, for example, during the Corona crisis, a lot of the activity had to be done at home. And so you're just uh, have to, in some cases, have students keep logs and trust what they do or take videos of themselves doing the the activity or provide other documentation that they're doing. Uh, for all online learning, another issue is cheating. Uh, how do we know that whoever we're doing, whoever is taking the class is doing the work? Um, over time, as we get better at doing this, there are a variety of uh, techniques that can be used. I'm not going to go into those, uh, but one of the other options is to do a hybrid course where you actually do some of your testing in person. Um, as far as content goes, uh, I mentioned earlier that one of the advantages of either the, sec the high school or middle school book is that you have comprehensive integrated content and you don't have to try to uh, find all kinds of things or create all kinds of things and then put them together in a comprehensive and integrated way. That's already been done for you and it's been for you. Um, another issue is teacher load and class size. Um, some schools um, and universities, I should say, are, are requiring teachers to take on extra large classes and online classes. And um, I think that's something editorially that I think we as teachers ought to stand up against because uh, there's every bit as much, if not more work involved uh, as those of you who have been forced into this kind of thing well know. Uh, one other idea that I have is that if students are exempt for athletics or ROTC or whatever, they still haven't met our national standards and fitness education frameworks. Just because they get activity doesn't mean that they're learning our standards so it's my assessment that anyone who is exempted for any of those should also have to take an online uh, uh, mini course such as the ones I'm describing here to fulfill that aspect of the uh, requirement for physical education. Um, I'm going to just briefly go over um, a few things about fitness and that is Outside of online learning, we know it works. Uh, over the last 24 years, we uh, conducted Project Active Team to provide an evidence base in three published studies for uh, conceptual physical education using the Fitness for Life textbook and the Fitness for Life model. It's still going on at Mount Point High School, meaning Fitness for Life, at, in, uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona, where the Project Active Team was conducted. I've just selected out a couple of studies. Um, uh, the research was students took Fitness for Life conceptual PE as freshmen in high school. As juniors and seniors, and then one to two years after graduation, they were um, assessed their physical activity. And uh, CPE in the red here shows that for girls, a percent of inactive girls as juniors and seniors, two to three years after they took the class, they were much less likely to be inactive than those who took traditional PE or a national sample of age match peers. One to two years later, and this was published in one study, and then one to two years later, we did the same thing and we found the same results, except they were even more dramatic. Plus for girls, there was a muscle fitness benefit for uh, sexual physical education, fitness for life. And the results were similar for boys. I'm not gonna go into this because that's not the main purpose of this. The main purpose of this presentation is to talk about how this can be, fitness for life can be done online. The point is that fitness for life face-to-face -face works and we have evidence that that is true. Uh, 20 years later, in other words, really 24 years later, 
This publication came out in 2018 in the Journal of Physical Activity and Health, and we'll put it in the handout for you to have and use if you want to find out more about this. But basically, we compared those who took uh, conceptual fitness, uh, physical education, fitness for life, using the fitness for life model, and compared to a national uh, sample of age match peers for boys and for girls, or in this case, men and women, because it's 24 years after they were freshmen, 20 years after they graduated from high school, we used their class 20th class reunion in Facebook uh, to collect the data. Uh, Pam Kalina and Henry Yu are collaborators on this study. And again, what we found is that CPE helps people later in life to be less likely to be inactive. Plus, for boys, there was a moderate activity benefit, and for girls, there was a vigorous activity benefit. Furthermore, 56%, 20 years later, 56% said they remembered the class, 50% said they still use the information, 47% found the class useful after graduation, 97% considered themselves to be well informed about fitness and physical activity. And in all three studies over a 24 year period, all significant differences favored the CPE group. So, CPE, Fitness for Life, works. Other studies show that college students using this approach are more likely to be active in years after college and be more knowledgeable and have more positive attitudes. Other high school studies have shown that high school students often lack fitness and exercise knowledge, and CPE program studies show that it builds this knowledge. A study done by uh, uh, Dr. Ong Chang, uh, Chen, excuse me, Ong, Ong Chen at the University of uh, North Carolina at Greensboro uh, has shown that CPE is effective in promoting physical activity and knowledge after. Uh, kids get out of school. Uh, this is known as the PE effect. Uh, the theory is that as we build knowledge, it increases motivation, which leads to a later in life out of school physical activity. Um, I mentioned the issues, uh, various issues. We need to be concerned about these. One that uh, a couple that are also of interest um, include use of ebooks and their availability. Uh, do all students have a device? And if so, do they have internet access? And uh, can schools like you, if you're a physical education, have the resources to buy uh, digital books that come with all of these resources that I've talked about? Well, uh, there are uh, Title IV grants that can be used to get this. There are other types of grants that can be done to get this, but even if they're not, uh, there's sound scientific evidence that I just presented that this type of program works, which should bode well for you as you try to get the necessary materials to buy the resources that you need, and we should compare equally to other subject matters who have budget for textbooks, in this case, digital books. In summary, online learning is here to stay. And uh, if we're gonna have it, we need to do it well. And we need to follow the guidelines that I mentioned. And uh, we need to get access to resources that are available. Resources are available. I've described some. You can do your own, but if you do, then you have the burden of coming up with content that is integrated, uh, well organized, and so forth. And integration matters. Uh, making sure all materials are internally consistent and passing on a, a consistent message to students. I showed you evidence that Fitness for Life works, and I, I and if any of those things work for you, help is available. Uh, resources are available uh, on the um, handout. Thank you very much. Uh